Okay, so this example is free body diagram example number three. And in your sample e examples <laughs> um, on your D2L page. So, a gymnast is holding on to the rings, one hand on each ring, in an iron cross. That's when they look like this. So the rings are going up and they're holding on like this. Draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the gymnast. So, our object in this case is our gymnast. We want to identify those interactions and then draw a free body diagram of the gymnast. And in this example, we're going to identify the interactions and draw the free body diagram at the same time, so as we do the interactions. So just to give you a sense of what this looks like, if you're not familiar with an iron cross, so here's the rings, and you have a gymnast who stands and holds the rings like that. So that's sort of a picture representation. So what forces are acting on the gymnast? Well, one of the easiest forces to get right away, of course, is the force of gravity. So we're going to say that the force of gravity acts on the gymnast. That is between the gymnast and the earth. Force of gravity always acts in the downward earth vertical direction, so it's going to look like that. And if I develop my free body diagram as I do my interactions this time, here's our gymnast. The force of gravity is going to act straight down, and as a reminder, it's equal to mass times gravity. Okay, great. What other interactions are happening on the gymnast? Well, the gymnast is interacting with that ring, so we'll call that ring number one and this ring number two. So the force from ring number one, that's between the gymnast and ring one. Well, the ring is pulling up on the gymnast. So that's in the upward direction. So I have, we'll call that force one acting up on the gymnast. Well, the other ring is also interacting with the gymnast. So we have the force of ring number two. That's between the gymnast and ring number two. Well, it's also acting up. So it's also acting in the upward direction. Are there any other interactions? Oh, the gymnast isn't interacting with anything else. It's not standing on anything to have a normal force. It's not really squishing anything, leaning against anything to have a normal force. So there's no normal force in this situation. Just the interaction between the two ropes, the rings, and Earth. So that's our free body diagram. That's it. Now, I've represented the magnitudes in a very specific way. If the gymnast is holding an iron cross, they're not moving. So the net force acting on that gymnast has to be zero. We've talked about that idea of net force. So all the up arrows have to equal all the down arrows in this case because we only have ups and downs. So if I have two forces acting up and only one force acting down, then my two upward forces have to be exactly half of the force acting down so that my ups added together is going to equal my down. The second part of your question in this example says if the rings were connected to each other and a pulley was between the two sides, what would the force of each ring be or would, would our free body diagram change? So in this example, I'm just going to redraw it. What we're talking about is here's our two rings and they're connected over a massless pulley. Our gymnast is still standing there in his iron cross and only male gymnasts do the rings in competition. So he's standing there in his iron cross. Does the free body diagram change? It doesn't. We still have the force of gravity. That hasn't changed because the gymnast's mass hasn't changed. And the gymnast is still interacting with two objects, this rope and this rope. Even though they're the same rope, the rope is exerting two interactions on that gymnast. And so we still would have the rope from side one and the rope on side two. Now it might be a little more intuitive in this example that those two forces would be equal. It's the same rope. It's going to have the same tension in it. But indeed, if I were to put a little force probe in here and measure that force, it would still be half of the gymnast's weight. All right, that's a little harder to think about and conceptualize, but two interactions mean there are two forces upward, one force downward. If he's in equilibrium, and he is, then the forces have to match. 
And so our two upwards are exactly half of that force acting down. All right, good job.